It was characterized, I remember, as it was the last stand of humanity. We send our best one, our chess grandmaster, Kasparov himself, to fight this machine. IBM had this machine. It wasn't even like a deep neural net of a transformer layer. Not none of that, not of that modern stuff. It was just like a brute force big machine. And it played chess against Kasparov. And long story short, the last stand of man didn't go well. I mean, that was like 30 years ago or more, right? So uh, no, we lost. And that went pretty bad. So now Kasparov had basically three options. Uh, he could go on a crusade and say, turn off, shut off all the computers, the Luddites that went and destroyed all the machines and says, shut it all down. Or he could have gone, you know, in, in the mountains or in the desert and hide and say like, oh my goodness, like that's the end, right? And just like be the one who tries to survive. But he, he didn't do any of that. What he did is he created something that is called advanced chess or cyborg chess or centaur chess or freestyle chess. It's really freestyle. He's like, you can bring whatever you want. You know, it's, it's freestyle. It's a matter like, let's say, okay, everything allowed. Bring your computer if you want, like whatever, like pump yourself up with whatever you want. You come in here and do freestyle chess. And it's very interesting what he is finding in this freestyle chess. The one who wins is not the supercomputers. It's also not the grandmasters that win. And most interestingly, it's also not the grandmasters with the supercomputers that win in these kind of freestyle chess tournament. What Kasparov tells us is that a weak human and a machine, but a better process of collaboration was superior than a strong computer alone. And more remarkably, superior to a strong human and machine and an inferior process. So even if you have a strong computer at chess, grandmaster with a machine, but they don't collaborate well, then you're not doing as well. Shrink us back to one of the personalities we already had in, in, in today's lectures, Professor John von Neumann. And Professor von Neumann told us that the best we can do is to divide all processes into those things which, which can be better done by machines and those which can be done better by humans, and then invent methods to pursue the two. So basically what he's saying in these kind of collaborations is we have to invent methods to collaborate between them. And that's actually what innovation theory teaches us. So the Incas, they liberated themselves from a lot of manual labor and invented written language, these knots, which then helped them to actually push the agricultural to production to a new level because now they had a rudimentary storage of information. They could record how the weather was going. They were looking at the stars. The Khmer had these amazing architectural structures that would help them to really expand also the agricultural production. So you start to collaborate with them. You start to do new things and the stuff that is automated before that you liberate yourself from, you collaborate with what the machines can do better. Well, back in the days, they were better at watering rice fields than us carrying buckets of water. And we are doing new things in order to collaborate with the machines and going, going uh, beyond that. And you can also see that a very good example is that once we do that, by the way, also like, you know, it's not, it's not like we, we, we then uh, get rid of what the machine has solved. We actually get more fascinated with it. In this paradigm, what happened with chess is that the machine taught us new ways of playing chess, more efficiently, that motivate a lot of new people. Chess is much more popular now that it has ever been. If you look at chess.com with 100 million users, I mean, chess has been extremely popular. Like people don't, if you look at the research, people don't remember a time where as many people as frequently have been playing chess. Even so, supposedly, it has been solved by a machine 30 years ago. So the machine actually made it very attractive to play with us. Interestingly, we don't watch two machines playing each other. We don't. We actually, because what we also wouldn't understand, we collaborate with the machine and we play with the machine or we learn from the machine to play with each other. And that's actually, that's actually what we do. 